if you are in an ungrateful state, why would opportunities come to you? If you want to live a meaningful, positive life, you got to just focus attention on it. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the podcast in partnership with Najahi Events, our awesome new sponsor, Smartcast, and with great privilege and thanks, I have to say, to Aldar, the developers from Abu Dhabi, who allowed me today to interview Lewis House. And if you don't know who he is, then you've probably been sleeping under a rock. Lewis Howes, School of Greatness, one of the most successful podcasters of all time, shares his story with me. And you know what? He made me stop and think. We talked about gratitude, and that's something that I've been criticised of by my wife and others for not having enough of. But it really got me thinking. And before I tell you too much, we're going to cue the music so you can hear this story. Mr. Podcast, <laughs> I've been wanting to interview you for a long, long time. And the fact that we're here in Dubai, in my yeah, hometown, yeah. with Aldar and a great event that we've come together on. So first of yes. all, you've been to Dubai before. <clears throat> what's, it, what's your impression of this place? Mind-blowing. So inspiring. Uh, the fact that this was all a dream 50 years ago and now it's real and it's the biggest, the best, the brightest you know, in the world. It's pretty cool to see. And just talking with you before the show about how it's so safe and people respect each other and there's like an ethos here of how to live life in a beautiful way I think is really inspiring. Yeah. And you got a chance to meet a big crowd of people today. Yeah. You're out there on stage mm. talking to the brokers that work for Aldar. Yes. And Aldar's this monster property developer down from Abu Dhabi. So they're kind of doing lots of things right by bringing people like you in to educate people. So yeah. what was the experience like earlier? I think it was great. For me it was awesome. I mean I was a little, tired, a little jet lag from coming over from the States but I think it's uh, I love being around people that are passionate about growth. And so if people are engaged and want to improve the quality of their life, they want to build their careers or business or whatever it might be, that's what gets me excited. So as long as people invest in themselves, then I'm pumped. You spoke, well, I listened to you today. And so when you spoke, it was, uh, lots of it's really moving for me. And so you, you've been through quite a journey mm. and, and everyone's been through a journey, but as you listen to your journey, it kind of like, it just, it's like waves of stuff that comes your way that you seem to have to fight through. It's like a thick fog that you mm -hmm. fight through all the time. Mm -hmm. You lost your father recently, which mm -hmm. we know about, which in my condolences for Thank that. You. That must be tough to go through that type of experience. Yeah. But as you've gone through your life, how do, how do you keep so peppy and chirpy? Where, where does it come from in you? Are you just, <clears throat> just Mr. Positive all the time? Or, or is there something about the way that you handle situations? I truly believe that I'm just blessed to be alive. And I think uh, with death and with, you know, I'd see people get injured playing sports growing up and then lose their dream. They, they weren't able to play anymore. And so early on I would see that. And I even had an accident myself where I got injured and I lost my ability to play football, which was the only thing I cared about. So I think when I came to realize this perspective that I'm just really fortunate to be alive and really fortunate and grateful to have my body, my health the way it is, when so many people don't have that opportunity. I feel like there's not much to complain about. There's only joy and gratitude for what I've been able to experience. And that, that gratitude practice, it's a daily practice. In the morning and at night, I speak to my girlfriend, we share three things we're grateful for every night, we talk about our intention in the morning, and even when I don't feel like it. You know, there's days that are not this like perfect day every day, but even when I don't feel like it, there's always something for me to reflect on and be grateful for. And that gratitude really just centers me, it grounds me to appreciation, even when there might be a death in the family, or even if some business deal doesn't go well, or even when I'm jet lagged, whatever it is, it's like I'm, I'm grateful to be alive. I've got a beautiful partner, I've got a beautiful, you know, friends, family, I'm healthy. I don't know what there is to complain about. Okay. Somebody who might get something serious, I don't know, like cancer, and then recover from cancer, mm -hmm. they could, you find it easy, you find that turning point between, you know, living, existing, and then being grateful. Yeah. What was that moment for you? Getting injured, for me, getting injured playing football, that was my identity, it was tied into sports. And so I went through a year and a half of, of struggling, trying to figure out well, who am I now, what is my identity, because this is the thing I love, I can't do the thing I love anymore, so I had to reinvent the next season of my life, you know, and uh, you know, and I don't know if there's here, there's seasons. It's just hot all the time. It's but hot and then not quite in, so in hot. The yeah. U, in the U.S., where I grew up, there's four seasons, right? And um, each season has a 
an intention. There's an intention behind that season. And in sports, I grew up with seasons. You know, you have the preseason, you have the season, you have the playoffs, and then you have the off season, right? Or the called the postseason and then the off season. There's four seasons in sports as well. And there's times to go all in on things. There's times to recover. There's times to taper off all that stuff. But for me, the 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 seasons of life are really you know, something that I think about. I used to love baseball when I was growing up. I used to love baseball. And when I turned 17, after my junior year of playing baseball, when the season was done, I had the off season to reflect. And I was just like, I don't love it anymore. It's not something I enjoy anymore. Uh -huh. I played it for my whole life, and now the season was done, and in the off season, reflection time. Do I still want to do this? Is it still something I care about? Do I still love this, yeah. this sport? And I didn't anymore. I appreciated what I had, but I didn't anymore. So when I lost the goal, uh, the dream of playing football, when I was a professional athlete, I wasn't ready for it to be done. And so there's a, there's a grieving time. There's a period of loss. Mm -hmm. Something was taken from me that I didn't want it to be taken, right? I needed to learn how to accept that. You know, I've gotten into surgery, I have broke my wrist, and I couldn't play at the level that I knew I wanted to play. So it's either, okay, play at a subpar level, and not really be happy, or find a new season of life and a mission that I can get excited about. So for me, when I got injured, when my dad got in, in, a, in an accident as well, that period in my early 20s was a big seasonal transition. And I think having the time to reflect and reevaluate what is the next season of my life? What do I wanna be doing? What, what's something that would make me excited, curious? What would I be proud of that I'm doing? Um, who do I want to spend my time with? You know, what are the activities, the people I want to be around? That's the stuff that you do in the off season. So that's what I really think about. Those, those transitional moments, those make or break moments are opportunities to reflect on what's next. That's a really positive mindset to start with though. I can give you some examples of where people in your situation might not have been that, that lucky, I'd say. Mm -hmm. There's professional, we have soccer, we call it football, but we have professional soccer players, they get injured, they've mm -hmm. been earning lots of money, accolades, and stadiums done. full of people, yeah. and they're injured, and that's it. But life becomes very dark. Yeah, to the point they live in the they, past. Yeah, and they, they spend all the money they've made, they sometimes drink it away, they spiral into depression, and it, it's like a forced retirement. But even the guys that retire when they're 35, 38, for them it's like a big, big shock. It's still hard. This has been your identity your whole life. Yeah. Okay, that happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I nearly killed myself. Yeah. Because I lost my identity in 2012. Mm -hmm. I built a business, everything I belonged to, okay, for 16 years. Okay, so I was 42, so most of my life I'd been there. And that all ended like that. And I was then paid for a year not to work. Mm -hmm. When they gave me the money at the beginning to pay me for the year not to work, I thought, take it, That's not, I'll be daft not to, yeah? Mm -hmm. It sent me on a horrible downward spiral. Yeah. I spent it's... four weeks seeing my buddies. Uh -huh. That was done. And then, then I had 11 months of doing nothing. I lost hope. Yeah. Tell me about Meaningful it. mission is the, is the, the key. And uh, if we're doing something without a, a meaning behind it, that's, in my opinion, fulfilling you know, that's serving our souls and supporting other people. Then if we're just doing something, we're just getting paid for something. This is why you hear the story of something like 80% of people that win the lottery, mm -hmm. you know, they go bankrupt really quickly or they commit suicide, yeah. right, after a period of time. There's, okay, when you're given something without the meaning behind it and you don't have the principles or the, the habits in place to pursue something that is service oriented, I just really think it's hard to find that inner fulfillment. What's the point of all this? Why is this happening to me? You know, what am I gonna do next with my, my time, my energy? We need to have our attention focused somewhere in a positive place. Otherwise, it's gonna take us to a place of darkness. And it doesn't matter if everything's taken care of you. You know, you hear about all these rich kids who are on antidepressants and who are on drugs and are on alcohol. Yeah. They have no direction yeah. if they haven't been given also the tools of discipline, service, and a purpose. So I'm not saying all of them have no direction, but it's like if you're just handed something or if you're retired and you have nowhere else to go, this is where you hear a lot of people when they retire, like older individuals, they quickly die. Mm -hmm. It's like, unless you figure out what's my next per season of purpose, you know, I'm gonna be there for the grandkids, I'm gonna help out the community, I'm gonna do something else active, learn new skills and hobbies. So I think that's hard. What would you think, you, if you would have had a mission instead of just 
receiving money without a purpose, do you think you would have almost committed suicide or wanted to kill yourself? If you had something meaningful to work towards. This, this, is, this is where the challenge lies because what I did for a living was meaningful. It was mm -hmm. my life. It was all encompassing. So it's really similar to you with your sports. Mm -hmm. It was all encompassing. And so it had meaning. And then the meaning left. Mm -hmm. And it, my, my problem was finding meaning. Yeah. In that, in that well, that's time. Well, that's the problem. You were, you were trying to find something as opposed to being it. Uh, and so that's really important what you just said there. You gotta, you, gotta be, you gotta be purpose, be meaning, not find it. And so some people might say, well, I'm at a company that I don't like right now, or I'm at a job that I don't like, or I'm not really in a, uh, a place that I wanna be right now. It's not my passion, it's not my purpose. But at that season, you may not have a lot of options. Maybe you need to be at that place for six months or a year based on the circumstances until you save or you find a new skill or you can get out of it. Yeah. But what you can do is you can be meaning, you can be purpose during that season. You can shift your energy and say, you know what? I was a truck driver for three months when I was 23 years old. And I remember the first week I was like, this is not my life to drive six hours a day with a semi truck, uh, car parts. I was driving car parts from Columbus, Ohio to Cincinnati, dropping them off and then driving back up. Wow. And the truck would only go 55 miles an hour. And on Ohio, you just see cornfields for hours. So there's no scenery, there's nothing. It's 55 miles an hour, pedal to the, the metal, and all cars pass you. And I was just thinking to myself, this is not my purpose, right? This is not my passion, I'm not excited about this. But I decided in that moment, I needed money to come in. This was the opportunity that I had in front of me where I could train in the mornings and at nights for football, something I was excited about. So this was six hours a day where I could get cash. I was making $250 a week, wasn't a lot of money. And um, it wasn't like I was interacting with people or getting to you know, talk to people. This is you know, pre-Bluetooth back in, back in the phone in the truck. There was no like, you know, radio station. I had a CD player. And I said, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to practice a skill, the skill of salsa dancing. That was something that I was excited about learning at that time. So I burned a CD of the greatest salsa hits, salsa dancing hits, and I would listen to this CD for hours every day and I would imagine myself dancing in my Never. mind. I swear to God, I would imagine myself and I would practice at nights. I would watch YouTube videos practicing as well. I would practice by myself in the mirror and then I would imagine myself going over the routine in my head, feeling the music, being in that energetic space for six hours a day. And it got me through it. It made me feel more excited about, oh, I get to go on a drive for six hours and learn salsa dancing. So it was a, I was being my purpose in that moment. I was bringing energy to a thing that I wasn't excited about. I wasn't excited to be in a truck for six hours a day, mm -hmm. but I made it more fulfilling. And I figured out a way to get out of that situation with an, uh, the next opportunity based on my circumstance. And I think when we're at a, a company or a place maybe we don't like, or maybe we're, are, we're having disconnection with friends or family or intimate relationships, we don't need to go find a meaningful mission or find purpose. We can be that purpose, be that meaning in those relationships right now with our teammates, our coworkers, our family members. There's always a way that you can be meaning or be purpose to impact someone else in a positive way. Okay. Even if you're not in the place you want to be. Theoretically, that sounds awesome. Right. Okay. I'm not saying it's easy. L l let's talk man to man here. Yeah, know? yeah. I've just told you finding, you've just told me being, mm -hmm. yeah? Ha give, give me practical tips, because there'll be people listening. Well, here's the thing, this. here's the thing. You know what's interesting? Have you ever gone to a restaurant? I mean, this is great, this is a great example. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and the waiter or the waitress was just like, man, they just, they remembered 12 orders. They were so positive, they were friendly, they were kind, yeah. they were just like Amazing. on top of it. Do you ever, can you just, yeah, yeah. this has happened a few times, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Have you ever thought, man, I would love to hire this person? Like, this person would be great here, or I know they'd be great for this company or whatever, right? Yeah. You hear stories of people that are at a job like this, that they're being an energetic state, and they're just being in service to the people they're at. They probably don't want to be there full time, right? It's probably not their main thing for the rest of their life. It's not their mission to be um, a, waiter. a waiter for 30 years. Maybe some people, maybe they like it, but not for everyone. It's usually a seasonal thing. Yeah, yeah. The really talented ones get picked up quickly by somewhere else, a different opportunity, because they're being intentional, they're being purposeful, they're being joy, they're being 
uh, attentive, whatever it might be. And I think those qualities, we feel that energy when we're around people that have it. And you start to attract what you want when you're being a certain way, as opposed to finding something you want. I'm not saying you shouldn't be putting feelers out and saying, this is what I'm gonna create. This is my intention. This is my vision. You can put that out there, but then become it and you'll start to attract it. It's like being really considerate of the moment. Absolutely. Being okay. so present in the moment. It, yeah. it, Everything is presence. Yeah. You know, every person that came up to say hi to me, I made it my intention, even with everything happening, I'm sweating and I'm hot and I'm you know, tired and all these things, I made it my intention to look everyone in the eye and give them a hug if I felt like it was appropriate yeah. you know, or shake their hand yeah. and look them in the eye and say, what's your name, where, where are you from? And, and just connect with people in their uh -huh. eyes. And that's hard to do sometimes if you're not confident with yourself, if you're not happy with where you're at in your life, if you're frustrated about something, if you don't want to be here, you're like, I'm not saying about this moment, I'm saying if you're at a job you don't like or something like that where just life isn't going the way you want it. It's hard to be that intentional state. Uh -huh. In an abundant state, when you feel like, well, I'm not making any money, I'm not happy where I'm at, how can I be abundant? Well, abundance comes from uh, gratitude, appreciation, and acknowledgement. These three things is kind of the foundation of abundant attraction. And so if you are in an ungrateful state, why would opportunities come to you? If you are not in an appreciation state, why would you appreciate and value? Or why would something else that you're interacting with appreciate? If I acknowledge you and I see into your heart and your soul some of the talents that you have and I speak it to you, mm -hmm. you already see you're smiling and I didn't say anything, right? It's like, but if you, I feel you in this but moment. If you feel like someone is seeing you, truly seeing the authenticity inside of you and the skills and the talents, uh -huh. and they speak it into them with appreciation and acknowledgement and gratitude, that flourishes, it develops, right? I'm developing something inside of you by just speaking it into existence and being in your energy in an authentic way, not like mm -hmm. some sleazy like sales strategy way, but I'm just really acknowledge and appreciate you. You can do that just by looking at someone and saying, oh, I see you. You know, I don't have to say everything, but if I just look at it, but if you also add something to it, like you look great today, it's good to see you, I love your energy. Like something meaningful can really transform a relationship that will start to attract opportunities, that will start to manifest in ways that you're not even aware of. Maybe it happens right away, maybe it happens years down the line because someone says, you know what, I remember meeting that guy and he was just like so nice to me. You know what? you should hire that guy. You should book him. You should have, the yeah, he was, it was awesome. I love the experience. I think it'd be great. You just never know where it will impact you in a different season of life. And so the foundation for ab abundance or attracting um, opportunities comes from gratitude, appreciation, and acknowledgement. And here's the thing. I love to ask people, think about your life and the people in your life, the people in your closest circle, then the next level, maybe your friends, then maybe like your acquaintances or colleagues. Mm -hmm. How often on a daily basis are you speaking gratitude, appreciation, and acknowledgement to the people you interact with on all levels, especially the people closest to you? Mm -hmm. And so on a scale of one to 10, how much do you speak that on a daily basis for the people around you? Again, it doesn't have to be like this long sobbing, like emotional conversation with every person. It can just be a quick sentence or it can be a presence thing. It can be looking in someone's eyes, paying attention, a quick thank, thank you so much for your time today. As you said that to me, the first thing that came into my mind was my, my parents live in Cyprus, which is a yeah. three and a half hour flight from here. They retired there and they're in their, their late seventies. And as soon as you said that to me, it just made me think about how I'm, often do you do that with your parents? I'm not doing that enough with my parents. Exactly. You know? And so I'm not saying you have to do it every day or something like that, but I, I think it's important for all of us to be aware of and to, on a scale of one to 10, are we speaking gratitude, appreciation, and acknowledgement into the people in our lives on a daily basis, especially the people we see daily? My girlfriend, I tell her all the time how much I appreciate her. I'm like, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so appreciative of you. I acknowledge you for like the joy, the energy you bring, like your attention. I speak to her daily. And I go to her, do I say this too much? She goes, no. And, I, and she's like, it's incredible. I've never experienced this from a man before who shares this. And I see her light up. So again, I'm speaking appreciation into someone. They're developing and blossoming into something greater, right? They're, they're, they're appreciating when we do that. And so I'll ask people to rate themselves on how they do this with the outer world. Appreciation, acknowledgement, and gratitude. How often are you doing that in the outer world? 
Just give yourself a range from one to 10. 10 being I do this consistently all the time. What would you say you're at? Scale one to 10. For, the, for most of the people in your life. Most of the people in my life I would be, I would probably be a four. Okay, four. Probably. Okay, so below average. Right. Yeah. Below average. I, I have, I have, from what you've been saying already, mm -hmm. all that's going through my mind is I, I haven't... I never tell this to my no, parents and my partner and my friends. Why, yeah, if I've got time to go on Instagram, why can't I send my mum a message just saying have a great day every day? Right. You know, well, why, why not? Simple text. Just a text. Now, I'm not saying we need to do this every day. I'm not saying... But I just, just but, be aware of it. That's yeah, all. Yeah. I'm not saying one's good or bad, right or wrong. Just be aware. And notice, are those relationships developing? Are they blossoming? Or are they kind of just staying the same? Stay Again, no same. right or wrong, no good or bad, no, there's no judgment here. Yeah. It's just to think about it. Now here's the other kicker. If you want to really live in a more abundant, fulfilled, meaningful life, you gotta, I truly ask myself, okay, gratitude, acknowledgement, and appreciation. Some people are good at doing that to others, but really bad at giving that to themselves. Not from an egotistical standpoint of like, I'm amazing and I'm the best, but more like, are you giving, are you grateful for the actions you said you're gonna do today that you did? Are you grateful for how you were kind to people today? Are you grateful for how you talked to yourself internally? Were you beating yourself up and saying, you idiot, you messed up again, you're stupid, you're this, which I did my entire childhood. Or were you kind in your inner thoughts today? Did you appreciate yourself for how you showed up? Did you acknowledge yourself today? On a daily basis, scale one to 10, where are you at? 10 being I'm kind, grateful, acknowledging, and appreciative of myself internally, you know, inner thoughts on a daily basis, where are you? I'm almost ashamed to tell you, it's really low. One, two, three. Yeah, two, maybe three. Yeah. So, and again, it's nothing right or wrong, good or bad. No, it's no, just something to be aware of. Mm. And I can imagine when you were in your darkest state, making money but no mission, you were probably a one, right, mm -hmm. in that state. And you probably weren't acknowledging or appreciating other people at a four, you're probably lower mm -hmm. at that time because you weren't feeling good. No. And so it's hard to speak joy into other people when you're not feeling good about yourself. But that's also the easiest way to feel better about yourself when you speak into other people and acknowledge them and then show appreciation. When you do something and give something to someone else, they light up, you find like, oh wow, that's, that's really good of me. Like that's, I feel more valuable now. I feel mm -hmm. like I did something to help someone today. That's a good thing. And so I think it's important to just take, it's a simple assessment, one to 10. Where are we on how we acknowledge, show appreciation and gratitude for others on a daily basis? And then how do we do that to ourselves? And most people are below a six, right? For both sides. Or maybe there are six or seven for everyone else, but they're two for themselves. Mm -hmm. So why would we develop? Why would we feel excited about life or joyful? You asked me this question, like, are you always peppy all the time? I'm not always peppy all the time. But whenever I feel like off, I go back into gratitude, appreciation, and acknowledgement. Even if I'm making a lot of mistakes in a row or things aren't flowing as naturally, mm -hmm. I'll think to myself, okay, <clears throat> this is just a developmental time. Like, whenever I'm learning something new, it's always really challenging for a period of time until it starts to click and then I always figure it out. So give myself grace, know that I've done so many good things leading up to this and I can lean on those good things to know that I'm a confident human being. Even if three months I'm messing up at everything. As we've gone through this conversation, you, you really took me into a place where I started to think about my parents. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunate, both my father and my stepfather are still alive, even mm -hmm. though they're older, my mum and whatnot. Yeah. So I kind of went into that place for a minute as you started to ask me those questions, which, um, I didn't like, but I thank you for. Yeah. Tell me about your, how your relationship with your dad mm -hmm. um, made you feel one to ten. Um, my dad was pretty amazing growing up. I mean, I had, a, I had two different fathers. My first 13 years, I had a father that I feared, and then from 13 to 21 until he got into a car accident and a coma, I had a father that I loved and was incredible. And he had a big transformation in his life uh, where he had overcome some darkness and some, some pain that he never had the tools on how to heal. I think mm -hmm. a lot of our parents probably never had any tools yeah. on how to deal with their childhood traumas. And so they kind of bring their frustrations into their, mm -hmm. you know, their adulthood. 
And so I had a challenging time because for 17 years my dad was still alive, but he wasn't emotionally or mentally really capable of having an intimate relationship with me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't like lean on him for mentorship or okay. connection. It wasn't the same because he had a head trauma and he never really fully recovered from the brain trauma. Um, but what my dad taught me was extremely valuable growing up. And as he passed away a few weeks ago, and I think about it more, this, you know, when he got in his accident, I remember thinking, oh, this is real. Like, he almost died. This could all go away from me in a moment. And so it put me into a sense of urgency of doing, going for it, of saying, what do I want to do? I'd rather fail miserably and at least go for something than not try and be miserable mm -hmm. that I never tried. Yeah. And so it, I was fearless in my pursuit of my vision. Right? I was clear on my vision, and then I would pursue the vision wholeheartedly to learn skills. So that relationship taught me that. And he always inspired me to go after my dreams. He never like limited me, which was a powerful mindset early on. Because I know a lot of parents want their kids to be more safe and have like a secure thing that's maybe not the thing they really want to do. Mm -hmm. So he gave me that gift, which is incredible. And so I've always just had a sense of urgency of wanting to create something, like not feeling like I have enough time because I feel like I don't. Like it could be gone tomorrow. And if it was done tomorrow, would I be happy with who I've become, who I'm being in the world? And um, what I've created, what I'm leaving other people behind with. And so that's been a, that's been a beautiful lesson in all of the tragedy of his accident and now mm -hmm. his, his passing. But it's, I'm just like, it could be all over in a moment, so what am I gonna do today? Do you think you made, do you think you made him proud? I think so, it was unfortunate because he, he was the most proud father. Like he was, it's funny because I got so many messages in these last few weeks. He used to fly out to all my games, right? He was six hours away and he would fly out for all my games in high school and college. Wow. Basketball, football, baseball, cool. track. He would take photos, this is pre-digital, right? So yeah. he'd take photos and he'd come back three days later to the next game with a big stack of like duplicates and he'd take photos of all the athletes on my team, not just me. Uh -huh. So we'd have photos of me, but then he'd make sure every kid had action shots. Wow. When this is like, no one was taking photos, there's no smartphones, nothing. So yeah, he yeah. was there with the lens, the only guy there on the field or the court. Getting the film developed as well. Getting it developed yeah. and then bringing it back to the next, next time he came back. So it was really cool. So many people reached out to me from 20 years ago and were like, your dad always left an impact on my life and he was always like, one kid, because I went to a boarding school for a while, and uh, one kid left a message saying, my first roommate in a boy's dorm, he said, I haven't spoken to this kid in 15, 20 years, but he reached out to me because he saw my dad pass, and he said, you know, I always wished I had the relationship with my dad that you had with your dad, and it was always beautiful to see how loving your dad was to me and how he showed up for me. And I always thought that was a cool model that I wanted to give to my kids, right? Yeah. Another kid said um, that his, he reached out to me. I completely forgot who the kid was. It was like they were 14, 15. He said, your dad came in for parents weekend to the dorm, right? And my parents couldn't make it. And he insisted that he, you know, I go with you guys to the movies and the dinner the whole weekend and he was my parent for the weekend when my parents weren't there. He would just do stuff like that. He, would, yeah. he had multiple exchange students growing up, living with us. He just, he cared deeply about people. And so he definitely rubbed off on me on like wanting to make sure people feel seen because mm -hmm. he was really good at that. The challenging part was for 17 years, he wasn't able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was hard because I knew what he was capable of, but he was mentally from the brain trauma not capable of doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. So. I had to learn how to kind of grieve and accept a mental and emotional death for 17 years, but I never got to grieve his physical death. So this has been a, you know, a sad but also grateful time to know that he's more at peace now. So, but I know he'd been proud, but he he never really got to experience the books and he, he never listened to a podcast because he couldn't really understand all this mm. stuff. So, but he would have been proud. I interviewed a lady the other day on the podcast that. Um, that her husband died uh, unexpectedly at 58. Mm. Just died, overnight died. That's, uh, and she wrote a book about trauma. 
And I, was, I said to her, let's, let's imagine someone's uh, wife gets cancer, they're, they're sick for two years and then the wife dies, knowing she's going to die. Or um, the wife gets hit by a car and dies overnight. What's, what's the worst form of trauma? And she said, there is no worse form yeah, of trauma. I so. e each trauma is the same. And yeah. don't think for one minute, okay, you can ever you know, try and put no. that into any, any type of box. It's, yeah. just, it's just not possible. Part of, me, part of me is like, yeah, I mean, for 17 years, I had a very different relationship with my father because he was, he hadn't, he didn't, he didn't know what he, he just could it was like, uh, he had memory loss, so every time I met with him, it was the same conversation. Uh -huh. It was the same questions, conversation every single time. Mm -hmm. Even if I went back to back days, it was like, where'd you go to school again? And he would forget my name sometimes. And, mm -hmm. So it's just challenging to be around a man that you know that I respected so much and admired, but it's like life can take it away from us. And so that's why the urgency, the gratitude, the appreciation for me is so important. Because mm -hmm. um, I've had these accidents for myself where I've lost things, I've had loss in my friends and family, and it's like, what are we doing if we're not appreciative and grateful? Even if it's not something we want to be doing right now, we can still be purpose. We can still bring joy to someone's day. All, all you're talking about right now is is really meaningful for me, and I wasn't expecting this. Mm -hmm. I know we're here at this, you know, this big event. Okay, we've been speaking on stage and stuff, and I'm sitting here with you after a long day with you with jet lag, and it and it really means something to me. Mm -hmm. And I want you, I want you to understand that. And thank you so much for just sharing a little bit about your dad. I feel like I know him a bit better now. Yeah. Let's change tact a little bit, and let's talk about School of Greatness and this epic and incredible podcast that you created so many years ago. Um, People say to me, Spence, your podcast has been around for ages. How many episodes have you done? And I'm like, 180. <laughs> you know, one a week's come out religiously. Yeah, you know, yeah. we've made it better and we've done this. And then I feel great in that moment. And then I'm like, oh, hold on a minute. How many has Lewis done? You've done this podcast for so long. You must have met some incredible people Amazing along people. the way. Yeah. And I couldn't begin to ask you to take out of 1,280, pick your best. That'd, yeah. be, that'd be mad. But how... How do, you, how do you think about the process when you go to interview people? Mm. What, what, what is the process you use? I mean, do you, how do you choose somebody? How yeah. much research do you do? And, and what, what is the purpose of each conversation for you? What are you trying to get out of it? Well, I start with my mission. And my mission is to serve 100 million lives every single week to help them improve the quality of their life. So I think about who is a person that can help me reach 100 million lives? Who is a person with an audience that's big enough that could help me reach that? Who is a person who's got a, uh, a philosophy, a strategy, a, um, insights, research that is something new or interesting or unique that even if they don't have the audience is so profound that this will reach and impact lives? Uh, I think about the, the kind of the four main categories that we cover, which is health, relationships, mm -hmm. money, slash business career, and then... Um, kind of mindset, spirituality, purpose, right? Or just general inspiration, kind of those mm -hmm. four categories. So I try to think about diversity of you know, races, religions. I try to think about balance between men and women, all these different things. I try to think of like, if there was something that I wanted to listen to, what would it be that would help me? And this wasn't available nine years ago when I created it, so I created a thing that I wanted to listen to. Yeah. Um, and I'm always thinking about what can I do to level up constantly, level up the production, level up the quality of guests, all that stuff, the marketing, everything. And then before the interview, I really set an intention. My intention is to make this the most powerful interview this person has ever done. And so I asked them, what would make this the most powerful interview you've ever done? What a great question. So that they know they're not just coming to do another interview, they're coming to change the world. And that this will be around for decades and people will be listening to this or watching this not just now or this week but continually and so that's what I really think about and I think about you know my team does research I do research but I really think about what's the thing this person hasn't said or if someone speaks about money all the time I talk about only relationships and because they never talk about relationships yeah. so I want to get to know why is that meaningful for them um, and how does it support them in their money and all these different things. So I just yeah. try to think about asking questions in a, in a way that if I were them, I would want to be asked.
which I think you're doing great at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it makes a lot of sense to me. That, that, what you just said, the how can I make it the best? I mean, yeah. I never thought about that. That was that was a real. I need that, guys. Can you make a note of what that was? That's really important because I don't ask that question and I want to. Well, it grounds what people, I, you know. It gets them like thinking. Yeah. You see them go, oh well, and they'll tell you. Well, actually, if we talk about this, this, and this, it'll make it the most powerful. Okay, you're telling me what you want me to ask you. You know, and I also I also ask people, is there anything off limits? Yeah. That you don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Usually they don't say anything, but maybe there's a few people that do, and it's like, okay, I'm glad I didn't go into that or. Mm -hmm. Actually, maybe we should go into that because that's what make it more powerful. And so I check with them on that. But yeah. if they just say, no, I'd rather not, okay, I respect it. So it's just trying to feel out the energy of the person. Do you love doing it just as much today as you did eight, yeah, nine years ago? I love ago? it. I love it. I mean, the first year was really fun because it was like this new thing. And I was really like the second wave, I would say. You know, it was nine years ago. It was like uh, Joe Rogan and like a few other like tech, you know, type of podcasts where maybe... 10, 11, 12 years ago, and then I came in nine years ago with a few of the guys, my friend Rich Roll and John Lee Dumas and mm -hmm. Pat Flynn and a few other like kind of guys in that space. And then it was like two, three years after that was like, I think Sirius came out, which kind of made it, put it on the map. Yeah. And then, you know, in the last three years, every celebrity and their dog has a podcast. And it's, I think it's great. I think it's great to like bring more people, more audiences. I always just tell people, like, don't start a podcast unless you're committed to doing it for two or three years every week to not make money. If money comes to you, great, but I started with the intention, I'm gonna do this every week for one year, just for fun, to see how it is. Because I was curious about it, and I wanted to interview people and share that with other people. And I was like, I'm not even gonna try to accept sponsors, I'm not gonna sell anything, I just wanna do this because I'm curious, mm -hmm. and I don't wanna add value. That intention, I mean, money started to come to me pretty quickly, and um, opportunities and audience and all these things. This thing is because I was, had the intention of just serving, not what can I do to make money. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do something to make money as well, but I, I had money already saved up that I didn't need the money quickly. So I was just like, I'm going to do this to add value every week. And after a year, I only had 750,000 downloads. So I didn't even reach 1 million downloads year one. And I worked my butt off every week promoting it, messaging you know, 50, 100 people every week, one by one, check this out. I was working so hard. I had no following then. Um, but I learned a lot by being in the nitty gritty in the trenches for that first year. And uh, you know, I just said, I still love this. What I wanna do next? And people, the response was so powerful that I was like, okay, I'm gonna try twice a week, year two. And then they were like, oh, we want more. So I was like, okay, I'll try three times a week. I was like, all right, that's a lot. So I've been at three times a week for the last like five years, yeah. That's mental, that is. For me, it's been an absolute joy doing it because I'm really interested in people. Yeah, of course. And so that I have a natural curiosity. Like, like you said earlier, so there's, there's a natural interest you have in wanting to understand someone's journey, um, where, the, where they struggled and also, mm -hmm. but where they peaked as well. And, yeah. You know, that stuff like that. So this real desire. And it always comes back down to that if you, if you love something enough, even if it's a hobby and it's not a business, mm -hmm. you'll find time to do it. Yeah. Yeah, you'll find time to do it. Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's like this, this event here with Aldar, okay? I know I'm here with Aldar, okay? And I know that the, me being on stage, that's great, don't get me mm -hmm. wrong, it's nice. This is, this is way, way more valuable to me, selfishly. Yeah. Okay. And so I'll leave here today after spending time with you, buzzing when I get home and I tell my wife, you know, I've had a chance to have you on the podcast, sure. like Mr. Podcast on the podcast. And just learn about you, who you are as a human being. My whole goal is to never say I've got it all figured out. This is me nine years doing this 1,200 something episodes. I'm still curious because I don't have all the answers. I want to find people. And I think I do a really good job of asking kind of like, I call them dumb questions. It's like, kind of, I remember just sitting in class all the time in school being like, this is a dumb question. And people would laugh at me when I would ask dumb questions. But I was like, these are the questions I want to have answers to. And so I was just like, I don't care if people laugh at me, I'm gonna ask the stupidest questions that people might think are ignorant or just like, oh, what are you, why are you asking that? But then everyone always asks me, or everyone always tells me, I'm so glad you asked that, because I was thinking it, I was thinking it, and then you asked it, and yeah. I was just like, I just wanna know the basic stuff that's gonna help me improve my life, you know, in different seasons. And, and you'll, you'll see me have people on, like I'll have a bunch of relationship experts on when I'm going through a challenge in relationships, because I'm like, I need some support, I need some help. And so for me, I'm just, I'm still as excited today. 
I'm even more excited because now I have a great team that can really help it grow and you know it's easier to get big names and all this stuff so it's like oh I can really tap into like what I want to do now. Did, did you ever want to be famous? Being, being a professional sports person comes with fame. I think I wanted, I don't know if I ever wanted to be like famous, like I'm going to do something to be famous. I wanted to be recognized for my talents. Okay. Like I remember as a kid like wanting to be recognized, like wanting to do really well work extremely hard and accomplish my goals and people being like, wow, that's really cool. You like overcame that. You worked for 15 years for this one thing and you made it happen. Like I think I wanted people to, to yeah. recognize my skills and talents, yeah. but I was getting that by playing sports because you know, if you're playing in a sports game, basketball, football, whatever, and you're making plays consistently and you're blocking for your teammates and you're hustling, you're gonna get acknowledged. Like your coaches could be like, Great effort. Yeah. Teammates are like, thank that was amazing, man. High five. You're gonna get that constant feedback. Yeah, yeah. So I had that incorporated consistently throughout my life. I wasn't like, I'm gonna do this so that the world recognizes me. I just wanted to be part of communities that saw my effort and my talent. Um, you wanted to mean something? Yeah, I think I just wanted to be like, okay, I'm a part of a community that people recognize as like I work hard, you know, I work hard to show up and do my best and, and contribute to a common goal. Yeah. Like a goal in sports was to win, right? And, and be a part of a good team, a healthy quality team. A, a mission that we have with our team now is to serve 100 million lives weekly. It's just shifted into a different goal. And it's, I, each one of our team, on every Monday's team call, we do a round of what are you grateful for and who's someone on the team you want to acknowledge? It's not like I'm just preaching this stuff and I'm gonna do it. This is stuff we do on a consistent basis. You asked me when people came out on stage here at the event and asked question, I said, before you ask your question, tell me your name and what you're grateful for. Yeah, yeah. This is not like something I'm just telling you on this interview. It's talk to my girlfriend, talk to my team. It's like we, we do this. Even when things are bad, even when things are not perfect, and even when people are having challenges in their life. Even with my dad passing a few weeks ago, you know, I still showed up and I was just like, guys, thank you for being patient with me during this time. Like, I'm gonna be in and out of work and I'm gonna be taking care of family stuff, but I really appreciate you guys stepping up and helping me with this and helping with this and a lot of things that I, they had to take over that I couldn't do anymore for a few weeks. So, um, this is just embedded in my daily practice, even when I'm not having a good day. And that shifts me back into having a better day. You have got no idea of how important what you're saying really is. Like, the, because a lot of people sit in that place, that dark place, that empty place, that place of, of, of no meaning, that they really do, okay? I understand, and, I've been there. And so the lessons that you're giving in, in this conversation right now are really important, like really important. And for anyone that's listening to this and watching this right now, so like, have a look at your life. Mm. You know, I was taught to do an exercise years ago and that was to look in the mirror and look at my pupils, mm -hmm. okay? And like stare down into my pupils for five minutes and have a conversation with myself. And that conversation, like before I'd go on stage or something, you know, before I had an important meeting or ready to get ready for the day, okay? And, and it, you know, I used to have to say to myself, don't forget who you are. Okay, mm -hmm. don't forget what you stand for. Okay, you, you can do great things and today is gonna be your day. And if I did it consistently enough, long enough, guess what? Yeah. Everything was great. But when mm -hmm. I forgot doing that, things started to go down. Yeah, I think you state. can do that at, you know, at the end of the day as well. There's little moments we can have rituals or just exercises that, that we remember. At the end of the day, you could look in the mirror and say, am I proud of how I showed up today? Mm -hmm. Did I respond in elevated states or was I reactive in emotional states in certain times? And it's just an evaluation moment. Did I do what I said I was gonna do? Was I on time? Was I in integrity with my word? Am I proud of myself? And you can give yourself on a scale of one to 10, like 10 being like, yeah, I was in 100% integrity with my word, my efforts, my energy, great, and keep doing it. And if you're at a four, okay, what can I do just a little bit tomorrow? It doesn't have to be this groundbreaking thing of mm -hmm. like some practice or hack or whatever. It's just, if you wanna live a meaningful, positive life, you gotta just focus attention on it, you know, and reflect on it, okay, and evaluate what's the thing that's holding me back. Lean into it. Incredible. I could sit talking to you for hours. Lewis, Lewis, I mean this sincerely. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and join us today on the show. It really means a lot and I really appreciate you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you.
Whenever it comes to the end of a podcast, I, I look back and try and think about the, the special moments that I had, the little lessons that I've learned along the way. And today with Lewis, for sure, it really taught me to stop and start understanding what I need to be grateful for. Maybe you noticed it too as we had that conversation. To hear the story and the journey that he had with his father passing really moved me and it made me start thinking about my mum and my dad and how much time I don't spend being grateful and being present with them. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have. If you're watching this on YouTube, guys, then you can click over there and get more episodes, but I would love it if you clicked over there, press the subscribe button, cost you nothing, and then every single time I produce content, it's gonna come to you first. Go on, get over there, click that one, and subscribe.